Now, you can start then, of course, playing around with this person. You start making these lines deliberately uh, uh, different. One is obviously shorter than the other. These two people pipe up, oh, they're the same length. What does this person say? Well, in a majority of cases, again, these students will continue to say that the lines are the same length if these two other people uh, who outnumber them are saying that they are the same length. Uh, this is filmed in some cases, uh, these experiments, and so you can uh, see the, the, the student's face, the person looks at the line, registers that they are, they are different, hears the other two people say, oh, they're the same, a little puzzlement, shock, kind of looks, looks around what's going on here, then a little moment of indecision, and the person in a slightly tortured way says, they're the same, right? Now, the question then is, why is the student doing this? Okay. And the answer is, Right, conformity. And so what we have here is uh, when persons are in a situation where they're with their peers, we feel a certain kind of pressure to be dependent intellectually, to let other people's judgment of the situation substitute for our own independent judgment. Um, or it might be the case that our judgment independently is fine. We can see very well that the lines are different here, but we don't have the courage necessary to, uh, to speak for our own mind because we don't want to face various kinds of, uh, of disapproval. And so in a small scale, low stakes situation, we have a kind of cowardice right, that's going on here. Now what this then means uh, uh, for the psychologist is lots of things, and psychologists have done all sorts of variations on these experiments here with different kinds of test groups and so forth. Our purpose here is education. Uh, if these psychological results are legitimate, and there's lots of data to show that they are, they do pose a challenge for us as educators because one of the things that we have to factor in is our knowledge that our students, like any average student here, uh, is subject to various sorts of pressures, will feel various sorts of temptations under right, circumstances of, of peer pressure and among their peers to be more dependent in their thinking and not, uh, not be courageous enough, right, so to speak. So then to flip this around, our question is, if our goal is to have students uh, focused on the truth, to know the truth, to be able to assess the circumstance and, and uh, recognize the truth for what it is, and to be able to speak the truth right, when appropriately, one of the things that we're going to have to uh, teach them how to do is how, to, in their own thinking, to be independent, right? not to substitute the judgment of other people, particularly in cases where the judgment of other people is different than their own, and where appropriate, to exhibit the necessary courage. It does take courage to, uh, uh, in, in the face of being outnumbered by other people uh, or in a large crowd of people to say what you think is true, particularly in cases where you know that there are other people who disagree right, with that assessment of truth. So in addition to teaching all of the regular skills of observation, classification, uh, logic, and rhetoric, and so forth, and in addition to teaching the skills of perseverance and objectivity and open-mindedness and creativity as teachers, part of our epistemological mission is to cultivate the appropriate independence of judgment and to a cultivate the appropriate courage right, in our students. In some cases that might be a fragile read, how to strengthen that in a way so that by the time uh, the person is an adult or, or, or close to it, uh, the, the, the person is a fully mature, independent and courageous thinker uh, appropriately.